Hello and welcome to another Daily Digest. I'm Christian and as you can see, even though it's really cold, there's this beautiful ray of sunshine coming in the window. So bright. <laughs> I hope you're all well. Today is Wednesday, best day of the week. And uh, a few things to talk about today. Um, and actually, I'm not going to start with word of the day. I'm going to finish with word of the day. So, I actually want to start by talking about this. Now, <laughs> this is a research paper from 2013. And you can see my son, my son drew all over it. Um, but uh, the title of the paper is The Motivation of Adult Foreign Learners on an Italian Beginners Course. An exploratory longitudinal study. Ooh, what a name. So, so basically it was a study about, um, a study about what motivated adults who were learning Italian, right? And she followed, I think um, it was written by Liviana Ferrari, and she followed them for 30 weeks. So 30 weeks is a long time, really. And what did she discover about what motivated people to, to, to succeed at learning Italian? Listen to this. Um, the findings suggest that whilst the learner's initial goals and reasons for joining the course fueled their initial motivation, the positive learning experience and interpersonal dynamics developed in the classroom were responsible for sustaining it. And if you read the whole paper, basically, so at the beginning, you know, people, because remember, this is not, this is not state education. These are people adults who decided to learn a language. They said, I want to learn Italian. So at the beginning, of course, motivation is high. They're feeling good. You know, they're, they want to do it. But what sustained the motivation of the students who succeeded was the relationships between the teacher and the relationships between the other students. It wasn't like that they were learning quickly or that, you know, there was a great, amazing system in the classroom or they got good results in the exams. It was, it was none of that. Basically, they had a good time in class. They had fun with the teacher. They had fun with their students. They were communicating. They were socializing. The social aspect of learning a language cannot be ignored. That's why it's very upsetting when there is a lot of students at home, alone, disconnected from the world, with a workbook, memorizing stuff. That's just not... Number one, that's not fun, okay? H how is that enjoyable? Number two, it's a recipe for disaster because you're going to give up because it's boring. You know, go, you know, make a friend, <laughs> make a friend, a good friend, an attractive friend. <laughs> um, you know, have some conversations, be social. That's, that's why humans developed language to, so we could socialize and communicate and like talk about stuff. How can we make this tool better? Um, I'm reading, I'm actually reading quite, um, I'm reading about, um, I'm reading this book by Daniel Everett, How Language Began. And it talks about you know, like why we developed language and some theories about how and when it, it was developed. It's quite an interesting book because, you know, the sort of the, as far as I know, the hard evidence, like, um, the, the consensus, the evidence, the hard evidence is that language has existed, that we have had language for at least 65,000 years, that we can prove 65,000 years. But in this book, he suggests that 
that Homo erectus had language. So we're talking about two million years. That's a big difference. Um, and, and maybe he's right. The evidence he presents in the book is quite convincing. Um, quite convincing. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, I have some maybe I have some exciting news about about this coming soon. And also I have some exciting news coming soon in the group. Uh, exciting things. <laughs> okay, word of the day. Mm. Word of the day is this. Henchman. Henchman. Now, what's really interesting is that when my, my niece, Emma, when she came to Spain, she used the word hench as an adjective. And it meant hench as an adjective is like a cool like a cool new word right and it means big and strong so you could say oh man um you say he is hench which means he's a big strong guy or you could say that spider is hench like a gigantic scary spider and maybe also for inanimate objects like big things like i don't know the car is hench you know it's like a big strong car and what i love about that is that the word started in that way and then it transformed and transformed and then now it's back to being big and strong. So henchman, henchman comes in two parts. You see man and hench. Now hench is an old word that means horse. So basically a henchman is a horse man. And what does a horse man do? It's not, it's not like the body of a horse and the head of a human. It's not a centaur, okay? A, a, horse, a horseman is a person who looks after a horse. Um, they were like servants, basically. So imagine, so I'm talking about medieval times. Imagine medieval times. You're a knight, you know, a knight with a shield and a, a thing. You know, you're a, a brave, valorous knight. And you have a henchman who's kind of like your servant who looks after your horse, brushes your horse, feeds your horse. I don't know, I don't know what you need to do with horses. Look, looks after the horse. And so this person is with you a lot. They become somebody that you trust, somebody that you depend on, like a really close ally, maybe not a friend, but an ally. And Imagine over time, we move from medieval battles, we start to move to a more civilized society. But you still have a horseman. But the job of the horseman is different. Now, he doesn't look after your horse, he looks after your needs, right? Like, maybe he, he protects you when you are drinking mead, with your friends. Mead is like a special type of, um, like a uh, beer made of honey. Delicious. <laughs> um, you know, so he sort of protects you, right? He's like your, your right hand man, your right hand man. He's like your, your trusted, trusted companion. And maybe he does other stuff. He gets you food. He so suddenly it transforms into more like an assistant. And then, as society continues to develop, we have valorous knights who have power being transformed into other things. For example, politicians have henchmen, because politicians are the modern day equivalent of knights, right? Powerful people. Mafioso people, they have henchmen. People in gangs, they have henchmen. So henchmen become big, strong dudes that protect you and do your dirty work. That's a henchman. And in fact, look at this. This is a picture of Robin Hood. See, now Robin Hood. So there's Robin Hood there. Oops, hang on, I'm trying to do two things at once. Okay, there's Robin Hood. And this guy here, his name is actually Sir Guy. This is Robin Hood's henchman. He helped him and did stuff with him. You know, like, looked after his needs and stuff. So, 
What's what's really what's really cool? What I love. What I love is that this word started as horse boy, a horse, a big strong horse, horse. And then it went through all of this journey and then it became an adjective for big and strong, like a horse. That's cool. Um, yeah, so uh, I hope you enjoyed today's Daily Digest. Uh, Got to get back to work. I have a lot of things to do. My computer is going to explode with the, the amount of work uh, I'm doing. <laughs> okay. okay, now I'm talking nonsense, so I'm going to go. Um, have a great day. Um, go practice your English. Do something cool. Uh, don't be boring. Uh, okay, bye.